back. And if you're joining us now, we are just getting our first conversation started. Uh, of course, we are uh, bringing you our Meet the Candidate segment. And uh, for our first conversation this morning, we are going to be speaking with John August, who is the UDP's candidate for Cayo Northeast. Uh, good morning, John. Yes, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Marlene, good morning, Kevin. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Of course, it's um, always uh, a treat to get to learn a little bit more about um, the candidates who are seeking to be elected in the upcoming elections. Now, before we really get into politics, um, let's give our viewers a little bit of an introduction to who you are so, sort of as a person. So um, can you tell us a little bit about um, your background and you know growing up and a little bit of your personal history? Yes, well, um, first of all, I, I was born um, right here in the Twin Towns of San Ignacio and San Galena. Um, I did my high school education right here at Sir Park College. Then I moved on to um, St. John's College Sixth Form in Belize City. After that, I attended the University of Belize. Um, all my life, I've lived here in San Ignacio um, or, and also working along with my parents um, for a hotel. We have a small hotel here in the, in the Twin Towns. So I've been, I've been working in the tourism sector for, for many years now. I, am, uh, I started politics um, about yeah, in around 2003, sometime around there. I was, in, I was elected mayor in 2006 and I served for three consecutive terms up to 2015. Um, before I decided to run for the Connor East Division five years ago, which my candidacy was not successful at that time. Um, but here I'm again five years later offering myself as the as a candidate for the Connor East Division. So basically my entire life has been um, I've been, I've lived my entire life here in San Ignacio. Right. And what, what first got you interested in politics? It's something I always um, like from when I was very small, I, I always dream of um, one day participating in electoral politics here in Belize. And then when I got the, the call to, to serve to, to be a candidate for the United Democratic Party in the March 2006 uh, municipal elections, I took that offer up and I'm glad that the people had that confidence and trust in me and I was able to be successful when I ran for me. I was very young, I think I was about 26 or 27 at the time I was first elected as the mayor of San Ignacio and San Galena. It was a big task, but I had the, I really had the capacity and the experience not working in the private sector. So it, it, it took it on as a challenge. And I think my three terms as mayor was very successful. We completed a lot of projects here in San Ignacio and San Galena, especially the Welcome Center. And all. So I'm very proud of that project that was, I was able to do along with the IDB and the central government. You know. Now, John, when you look at, at the shift that you made from uh, being the mayor uh, of the Twin Towns and then being able to move into um, the be becoming the representative for Cayo Northeast, uh, we know that your predecessor had definitely been uh, mired in controversy at that time. And so I'd imagine a part of your campaign back then was to differentiate yourself. Uh, talk to me about how you present yourself to the voters in that area um, allowing them to have some kind of trust back in your party? Well, definitely, um, I, said I became here at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 but that didn't mean I was not ready. Yeah. Working in the, in the private sector, working with my parents and their small business, that taught me a lot. So when I, uh, and I think people saw that in me, that yes, that I was a young person, very ambitious, but I had also the experience and the, the leadership politics not to lead, mm -hmm. and I believe that is what um, gave, me, gave me an edge uh, in that election, and that's why I was able to be victorious. You know? Over the years, you know, being a mayor for nine years, um, I learned a lot, you know, and over the years, people have gained that trust, and know that I have the capability of leading this community. Okay. And since uh, the defeat in 2015, what have you been doing um, to reach out and earn back some of the voters that you weren't able to get to swing your way then? Well, I think um, every, every defeat you know, uh, teaches you something. You know, I, I had to get back on the ground, mm -hmm. and connect again with, my, with the people of the Ghana East Division. And I think over the time I've been doing that, I've been participating in the community, 
the various uh, capacities assisting um, on the various boards that I sit on. So um, I think that um, it's a matter of connecting with your people, and I think that's the, one of the qualities I, one of my strong qualities, no, mm -hmm. is able to connect with people, uh, sit down and dialogue with them, and understand what their, their daily struggles, and, just, and finding ways on how we can improve on those. No? So for the last five years, yes, I've been working in the in my business again in the tourism sector in my hotel, but at the same time also trying to do my best to participate in the community um, that I represent. And, and that's a critical point. And, and I think that when we look at what the landscape is today, it's hard to be able to talk to any voter without having the first conversation about the impacts of COVID. And there in, uh, in, in your constituency, the impact in the um, complete closure of, of the tourism industry early March is surely felt. So what have you been hearing when you go out on that campaign trail? What are people asking for and what are the, their main concerns? Well, people are, people's concern is um, getting back the economy, you know, get it rolling again. Um, definitely it's had a tremendous impact in, uh, in the loss of jobs you know, for many people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fortunate also, fortunate though that in some of the communities I represent, um, especially in Santa Familia, the Billy White, the Bronx, um, a lot of those people work in the Mennonite community there at Spanish Records. So the agricultural sector has um, has been affected somewhat, but many of these people have been able to retain their jobs. But also in those areas, we have a lot of people that work up in San Pedro, down in Placencia, mm. and those are the ones that have been affected. So they, they, they want the economy to get rolling again. And we know that tourism is a big part of the economy, so it's just a, it's a matter of time. But definitely, um, People getting back to work is one of the big, big concerns. No? Yeah. And um, what are some of your plans uh, to deliver some of what it is that um, the, you know your constituents need and what they're asking for? Well, definitely we have to um, look, think outside the box. And definitely, um, we have seen the effects that the COVID nineteen, especially with the tourism industry, has had on our economy. And so definitely we have to look for other ways of creating job opportunities for our people. Um, we have to maybe look more into the agro-processing sector, um, science, science and technology, attracting foreign investment, you know, um, try to bring those in so that we can create more opportunities for our people. And definitely um, land distribution, you know, a lot of, we have a lot of young people now that um, are still, still living at home but want to own a piece of land for themselves. and. They, that's one thing they are clamoring for and they're hoping that um, when we're elected again on November 11th, that's something that we will look at seriously, you know. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, in the sector of healthcare, you know, a lot of people, um, we need to continue improving on that. Um, so that's something that we have to see how we can have that more affordable you know, for people. As, as, I, as I go around, you know, that's one of the big concerns with the healthcare system that we need to make it more affordable for them. So that's definitely something that the, the next UDP government we will have to work together to make that more affordable for our people, especially in the rural communities also. You know, I, I'd imagine that that's a, a part of um, your challenge in going out and doing your, your campaign. Because while you were not the representative, uh, the party that you represent was in power. Um, and so whatever decisions were made, people will still uh, link to you because you're representing the party. How do you maneuver yourself in that situation? And, and, and um, especially if people are critical of decisions that have been made or haven't been made. Well, definitely, um, you're right to say that I'm the candidate. It's my party that is in government. Mm -hmm. And so rightly said, um, some of the, their concerns, you know, they, they would come to me and say, you know, um, John, you know, we haven't getting this type of assistance, this type of assistance. So what I do is I try to work with the people um, to ensure you know, that the, whatever problems we have in place, especially during this COVID time, that is impacting the lives of our people. And when I mean our people, I mean from our, from our cross section, it doesn't matter what political party you come from. No? Mm -hmm. um, because yes, the, the pressure is on me, um, but also, you know, um, we, we have to, like I said, you know, it's something we have to think about the box and then, Look at other opportunities that the audio for people and get them linked and get them um, 
into those type into those programs. No? There are many programs out there, but it adds, like I said, it all starts with leadership. Uh, we we have to be very creative. I mean, mm -hmm. the government alone cannot solve all the issues and the problems that are facing our communities. Um, as leaders, as, as divisions, we have to do our part also. So that's very critical. I mean, yes, and I, I know that we have been doing because the government or the leaders have been doing a wonderful job in, in trying to get that assistance of the other people. Um, but also the community has to be a part also. Mm -hmm. when, let, let, let's tackle um, some of the issues that we know are important to uh, the constituents in, in your area. Um, and let's start with agriculture. What is your platform? What are you telling people that John August, as the representative, would be working towards uh, when he goes to Belmopan on behalf of the people of Cairo Northeast? In agriculture, yes, that's our agriculture. Yeah, with agriculture. Well, definitely, uh, we have several issues um, affecting us in the agriculture sector. Um, we have this um, with the cattle exportation to Guatemala. That's definitely something I think in my area uh, we need to formalize that with Guatemala. I know we have a formal agreement there with Mexico, so that's something that definitely that exportation of cattle to Guatemala has to be formalized. Um, it's an important um, part of the local economy here in the Canada East Division with our farmers, so that's something that um, immediately when I win, and we win the government on November the 11th, that's something we have to work on quickly. Um, we have met with some of the the, the farmers and the agriculture people from Spanish to call my staff are the leaders, so we know that that's a concern with them. Mm -hmm. Definitely, we have to our own um, foods, uh, vegetables, corn, beans, but we have to get those um, processed so we can get them more to our, our processing. That's something that uh, we'll be taking to the and working along with the Mennonite community and all others that want to participate. Because definitely, we have to see how we can start doing that and then decrease that uh, importation of some of the goods that we import out there. Um, those are two of the, the main things I am seeing right now that that's something I want to tackle immediately as we wait for November 11th. And um, as you go around and get feedback from your from uh, people in um, the Cayo Northeast constituency, what is the sort of feeling that you get leading up to elections? Are you feeling lots of support? Um, uh, are, is the political movement in you know full swing? What what is it like on the ground? Well, yes, it's definitely in full swing. Um, the campaign has been going excellent. Like I said we have been campaigning on a daily basis. We have been in people's home. Um, the response has been tremendous. Um, people are, are are expecting us to, to go there and meet them, regardless of COVID nineteen. Uh, it's nothing like meeting your people and being there with them and talking to them. No? Yeah. Yes, Facebook is helpful and all that, but connecting with your people is very important. Also, they need to feel feel the candidate. They need to feel that love that you bring. And um, so far, my um, we have been practicing all we can in safety precaution as we campaign. I don't know with a big team. I go myself and maybe one or one other person or other person. So I'm not going there with a big big crowd at people's home. No? But um, they have been receiving me well. Of course, um, the necessary precautions are taken. Um, and, and people make you aware that, you know, uh, we need to take that precaution when you come to my home. Not because we don't want you to be close to us or that, that close contact, but we can still have that dialogue you know, from a distance away. But the, the matter is that you're, the, the, the great thing is that you're being there with them. So that, that's, that's most important. They want to see their candidates. They want to feel their candidates. No? Yeah. To know that the candidate is really, really interested in listening to their concerns and bringing and finding solutions. Um, when he, when we, when I'm elected, so that, that's quite important for me. It's interesting that you speak of, of the fear of COVID-19, and it's one of the things that, um, when you look at constituencies, especially like Cayo Northeast, where uh, the margin for the win was under 100, it is most important to you and all the candidates in that area that you're able to get people out to vote. Um, how confident are you that? from the interactions you had, that people will be able to overcome the fear and go out and exercise their right to vote? I, am, I strongly believe that people want a new candidate in the Canada East Division. I think that new candidate, they want an honest to be their, to be their leader. Mm -hmm. So I'm confident that uh, people will be going out to, to support me. You know? I am very sure, and like I said, I've been in their homes, I've been talking to them, and they've been expressing that 
you know, we will come out regardless of COVID-19, we will go, we will participate in the electoral process, and we will ensure that you become our new leader for climate peace. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, what would you say is your priority? Um, because you think of, of, we mentioned a bit about agriculture, and we talked of tourism in terms of unemployment, but there's also the loss of overall income from the businesses there. And uh, while crime, crime is still an issue um, in San Ignacio as well, how do you prioritize what, what is uh, most important for the residents in this constituency? Well, um, like I said, um, it's been going, you know, going around and visiting people and meeting them, and they, they are telling you what, they, what is affecting us now. And definitely one of the main things, like I said earlier in the show, is, is jobs. Man. We, need to, we need to find ways to, to create job opportunities for our people. And that's something that everybody's clamoring. A lot of people, you know, they're at home, they're not working. They feel like they're becoming a burden on their family members. So they, they want to be out there working. You know? And that's, that's happy to hear that people, you know, they want to be out there. They want to, to get their job back. And, and, and it's, you know, it's hard to prioritize and say which one is more important. Yeah. Um, but they're all important issues. Um, but I believe that um, having people back to work, getting our economy rolling again, those will, uh, those will, that will have a great impact on our communities, especially if people are working. Um, you should see a reduction in crime. Um, you should see uh, people more participating back in the local economy. Um, so that's, like I said, that's one of the biggest concerns I've been on the campaign trail the last uh, two months. Um, people have been clamoring for it. It's, it's back to get back to work. You know, we have to, we have to look at that very seriously and, 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 and find ways you know, that we can, can attract more, um, more opportunities so that we have uh, in, in the country that will then create job opportunities for our people. Are you uh, relying on the party's um, vision as to how to address unemployment or do you have um, ideas that you think will work best for the people in your area? Um, well, definitely part of it has a, has a great vision of how we'll get this economy back rolling. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have to look at what, what is uh, locally. You know? uh, yes, we have a national plan and what will be, how we'll get this economy rolling back again. And at the same time, you have to take from there and see how it, how it will impact on our local communities in my area. And from there, work along with central government, work along with the private sector, work along with anybody that, that is willing to, to participate no, in getting this uh, thing rolling again. So definitely, we, we're looking at it uh, holistically and getting everybody involved. No, that, that is critical, that is crucial for us. And, um, you know, I've, uh, from what you said, or just to go back to one of your to one of the earlier questions that Marlene asked, um, uh, what um, you know you said, I think more than once, you know, when you win and when you deliver the victory. So, um, can you just talk a little bit about what gives you the confidence and why it is that you think that people will um, turn out and vote for you come election day? Well. Um I represent the United Democratic Party for my constituency, and uh, people have seen the tremendous work that we have done over the last 12 years in government, you know, um, on the various infrastructure project, uh, some of the policies that we have put in place, the assistance that we have gotten putting uh, a lot of our people on certain social programs, people that really, really, really need, uh, need, that, kind of, that, need that kind of support. Um, during this time of COVID, um, under the leadership of our Prime Minister Dean Barrow, I think he has done an excellent job in um, reaching out to people uh, that have been affected um, through COVID. And I think people have seen the, the, the kind of uh, excellent leadership that this party possesses. And definitely with our new party leader, uh, the Honorable Patrick Fowler, uh, he, he's vibrant. Uh, he, he knows what needs to be done to get uh, this country rolling again. And um, definitely, I think people have that confidence in the United Democratic Party. And I am fortunate that I'm running on the UDP team um, uh, for, this, uh, for this general election. So I am more than, than confident that uh, the people have seen what the UDP has done. And they have that trust in their party. And they have that trust in myself as they represented, as the standard bearer for the United Democratic Party in Canada's division. So I think that 
will have a very that will have a tremendous impact um, on election day and people voting for me. And looking at some of the other issues, um, and I know that uh, the circumstances with COVID has put a lot of attention on the healthcare system. Um, there is the, the San Ignacio Hospital there, and there's always issues about healthcare in Belize. What are your plans uh, for the people in your area um, when it comes to healthcare? Well, definitely, um, in my manifesto, um the St. Ignacio Hospital, definitely we had something I really want to get upgraded to a, to a modern uh, facility. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the plans I have. I'll be working very closely with all partners, not only the Central Women, but everybody that wants to participate to get that hospital up to, up to a world-class standard. Um, we have quite a, it serves quite a large community, not only my division, but it serves the other divisions also uh, in this area. Uh, definitely um, addressing um, a polyclinic for the areas of in the rural areas, especially in Santa Familia and Billy White and the Dockrons. I think we need to have a, a, a polyclinic or a fully functional poly, uh, polyclinic to, to help uh, lessen the burden in the San Ignacio Community Hospital and people having to come all the way here to, to the um, San Ignacio Hospital in only in case of real emergencies. So that's something in Esperanza Village also, I think we will have to address that as a growing, uh, it's growing, the village is growing like all the villages in my area. So those are some of the things that I have plans for to, to work very hard in achieving um, for that. And also the affordability, like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to, to, health, to providing healthcare. Mm -hmm. you, you noted uh, that this is a part of your, your manifesto that you've presented so far. What else uh, have you made in terms of commitment? Also, the, um, in land distribution, I think I mentioned it earlier. I think there's a, a lot of people out there that want to own a piece of uh, land. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's not only uh, not only here in my division, but all across the country. But um, that's something that, as a party, as a government, we, we have to look at very seriously in land uh, in land distribution for first-time land owners, uh, making um, owning your own more more affordable. I think definitely that's something um, we have to look at in trying to come up with a plan uh, to, to make sure that every religion, especially our young people, have better opportunity to own their own home. I think that's something we will, uh, we will be looking at uh, quite seriously, and I think that's very important. I think having access um, to a home, um, having access to your own piece of land, having access to, to, uh, to good health care, and also the educational opportunities for the young people. We have to find more. We have to uh, find ways you know, of making that those opportunities even more for them. I know the government has been doing a tremendous job in that and providing assistance to our students all across this country. And I, uh, that's something that will continue. And I think we have to expand on it to ensure that every young person has an opportunity to go to school, and not only high school, but to further education, sixth form level at the university level. Um, I think that's key in, in building our in building our nation and planning for the future. So uh, educational opportunity is something that I really, really will be looking at to ensure that every single child in the Canada East Division has that equal opportunity to, to succeed as far as they want in, in, in regards to getting an education. And you know, since you speak of um, education and um, some of those topics, it, it it's often said that it's um, harder to reach some of the younger and the first time voters. And I'm wondering if you have been able to successfully reach out to um, some of the voters in that demographic. And if so, what was your strategy and how is it that you were able uh, to create or to you know, dialogue with younger voters? Well, yes, definitely that's something um, that, that that is key to this campaign. And uh, I, have a, I have a lot of young people on my team, first time people who have been out there campaigning with me and uh, visiting. Uh, so definitely we have been um, out there with them, touching base with the young people, listening to their concerns. Uh, I, as you, my team is made up of a lot of young, young dynamic people um, that are assisting me on this campaign. No? Um, I can say that for the first time, I think this is the youngest team I have that have been participating with me reaching out there through Facebook, through media, through other media outlets, uh, to, to listen to some of their concerns and see what it is that we can, we can do for them. 
Um, so um, I'm very happy to say that uh, I have a very, very young team with me, and they have been doing an excellent job in reaching out to the uh, to the young people of the area. Yeah. Now, let's talk about what you feel would be your greatest strength if you are elected as the area representative. What What does John August bring to the table that would make you the best candidate? Well, um, Marlene, I am a person that I, I am open to dialogue. I think that's something crucial in our small communities. Um, you know, politics um, does divide us at times. That should not, it should not be that way. Mm -hmm. I am somebody that once elected, I would dare be open to dialogue, listening to all parties, okay. um, approachable. And I have that interest to serve. It's, it's a matter of service to my country. And that is why I, I have been this long in politics. I believe that I have that capacity that I want to give back and to serve my people. And um, definitely I believe that um, service before anything else, and having that open dialogue, with you, not only with your community, but with NGOs, with foreign entities that want to come into our country to invest, you know, um, to look at all the opportunities that we can create for our people. So I think one of our, one of my strengths is um, having served for so long as a mayor, um, that experience that I gain, those relationships that I gain, not only with our local business community, you know, people here, but also the partnerships that I have gained throughout this country, and also um, we're, uh, working along with the, the, the various uh, foreign entities that that make up that uh, great opportunities, uh, you know, for for our country. Uh, I have been been working with them for quite some time, so I know what it takes, and I am prepared to do to do my part in order for us to improve the lives of our people of the Canada Peace Division. All right, well, we have a, a just, a, I think, about two or three minutes left, and we can give you that time to be able to just speak directly uh, to the voters of Cayo Northeast and uh, tell them why you are putting yourself forward for this job once again. Yes, well, I would just like to, to reach out there to the, to the voters of the Canada Northeast Division that uh, come November 11th, um, you know the person, you know the type of person I am. I have proven myself. Self, um, as a mayor of the Twin Towns of San Ignacio and Santa Elena, and I'm once again offering myself as a candidate now for the Canada East Division, and I am willing, I am prepared, I will be working along with everyone, I will be dialoguing with you, listening to your concerns, I will be doing whatever I can uh, when I'm elected uh, to, to, to bring betterment for the Canada East Division, to bring solutions. Um, I'm somebody that you can have that trust. You know, I'm ready. I'm energized, and I, I believe everything is about service for a country, and that is why I put myself as a young person, as a candidate, into the political arena. And I know that I still have that. I have that desire, that drive to to, to have to see and improve Kaimer East Division, and also for the betterment of my entire country of Belize. Quiero decir la gente de las aldeas que votan esta área, que ya nada más está listo para trabajar con ustedes, estamos dispuestos para estar visitando a ustedes en sus casas, ese va a seguir eh, después de las elecciones, va a estar regresando a sus casas, hablando con ustedes, a ver cómo pueden que va, para resolver las, uh, para buscar soluciones, a resolver los problemas que están afectando la área, y estoy dispuesto, tienen con, conmigo, tienen un liderazgo, liderazgo con, que tiene experiencia, alguien que sabe Eh, de la, que sabe de los problemas, que sabe que con buen liderazgo podemos a, adelantar esta eh, división de Cayo Noreste. Um, so I just once again appealing to the voters out there that give John August uh, an opportunity to be your next um, air representative for Canada, Canada East Division. And definitely it's something you won't regret. I'll we'll be there with you on a daily basis in trying to, to bring solutions to our many problems that we face in this division. Well, we appreciate you uh, joining us this morning, and so we wanted to be able to ensure that we get some of our candidates uh, to directly speak to voters across the country, and so the people of Cayo Northeast have learned a bit more about uh, the UDP candidates. So thank you so much, John, and stay safe on the campaign trail. Thank you too, Marlene and Gavin. Thank you very much for having me on the show. All right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by representatives of the United Nations country team 
here in Belize. We'll be talking about the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. Please stay tuned.